This is another episode of The Right Life Podcast, your number one source for everything bariatric surgery, from pre op to post op. Registered dietitian Alex Conception gives you real, raw tips and motivation through your journey. This is The Right Life Podcast. What's going on, family? Welcome back to The Right Life Podcast. Today, I want to give you a reminder on protein. If you've gone through bariatric surgery, you should know the importance of protein. But sometimes we just need that reminder. I've had too many consults lately, one to two years post-op, that needed to be reminded. We lose the weight, then we get comfortable. Old habits die hard. We have a few one-offs here and there, then life happens. Slowly, we go back to convenience, lose sight of that priority. Time flies, and now we're back to the yo-yo diet mentality. So here is your reminder. If you've gone through bariatric, well, if you've gone through a bariatric program with me, you know that I preach protein and non-starchy veggies first. What I try to establish in the first six months is a foundation for long-term success. This isn't just about losing weight. It's about healing, maintaining muscle mass, and yes, even keeping your hair healthy during that rapid weight loss phase post-surgery. Now, I don't like to demonize fruits, starchy veggies, rice. My goal is to maximize the potential of your tool and build habits or build on those habits. When you lead with protein and veggies, you are physically limiting your portions of anything else. So even if you indulge a bit, it's going to be limited, okay? Even though your stomach is smaller, The food choices will be the number one factor in your success. Six to 10 ounces of protein and veggies versus six to 10 ounces of cake, for example. Those are the same volume, but two completely different caloric densities. Now, remember, this is not a keto diet. A ketogenic diet is a four to one ratio of fat versus protein and carbohydrates with zero respect to overall calories. What I'm suggesting is protein and veggies because the calories are very low. A lot of people ask, why so much protein? Now that is a misconception. It's not about getting so much protein. It's about getting enough protein because you have less volume. Protein is necessary to build, maintain, and repair muscle and tissue. It will sustain your metabolism with a caloric deficit. Now, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics recommends roughly uh, 0.4 grams of protein per pound or 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram for sedentary individuals. We're talking lean body mass, not total weight. So to accommodate a variety of body weights and lifestyles, 150 pounds of lean mass sedentary would need 60 grams of protein. This is where that minimum 60 grams of protein comes from. But remember, this is just a baseline. Your personal needs may vary based on factors like age, activity level, and the type of surgery you've had. Each individual is different, but without an assessment or evaluation of your current lifestyle, just make sure you're getting at least 60 grams of protein, okay? Now, if you are above 65 years old, by having inadequate protein intake, this is even more important as you increase the risk of sarcopenia or um, age-related muscle loss, okay, which will also increase the risk of falling and even general activities of daily living. As we age, the body becomes less responsive to protein, a phenomenon called anabolic resistance. And because of this, the protein needs become greater per body weight compared to younger individuals, which would still generally fall under the 60 grams minimum. Keep protein as a priority and you'll continue grooving through those golden years. Now, just to be clear, I'm speaking to those who have veered away from the basics. This is a reminder if you're struggling. Let's get back to the basics and remember, protein first. Of course, this barely scratches the surface on the importance of protein. There's so much more we can discuss, like protein's role in recovery after the hospital, maintenance while on chemo, diabetes, blood sugar, and insulin response, dialysis, but you know, I'll talk for hours on that. Well, we can we can definitely cover those in a future episode or episodes. <laughs> but anyhow, back on topic. If the volume you can tolerate is very low, supplement. Okay, whey protein, casein, egg, pea, hemp, peanut, soy, 
just get those amino acids in. And of course, be aware of the total calories, so log your food. One thing I like to do is take a hydro flask, throw two protein waters in there and dilute it. Fill it up with water and ice, add a couple drops of crystal light, and it's not as bad in consistency and flavor. Because personally, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the protein waters, but um, if you are struggling or even making like ice cube, protein ice cubes, right? So anyhow, I digress. While you're focusing on your water with that strategy, you'll knock out an extra 20 to 40 grams without having to think about it, okay? Um, oh, one more thing. If you've had bariatric surgery other than the sleeve, we're talking bypass, SIPs, duodenal switch. These are malabsorptive procedures, and you want to aim for a minimum of 120 grams of protein to accommodate for that malabsorption. I repeat, 120 grams minimum if you've undergone a malabsorptive bariatric procedure, okay? Anyway, whoever needed to hear this today, I hope you heard it loud and clear. You got this. Have an amazing week, and I will talk to you in the next. Peace. This was another episode of The Right Life Podcast. For more motivation and future episodes with Alex, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any life-changing moments.